In the early days of computing, vacuum tubes were used as semiconductor devices. They were large, bulky, and just like a light bulb, burned out. The world drastically needed a device that performed exactly the same function, but was small, could withstand vibration, and could batter the inefficiencies of the tube. In 1954, John Bardeen, Walter Britton, and William Shockley invented the transistor, a device which did just that. A device that would revolutionize the world as we know it. Hey, Bernie, do you ever wish there was something better than these vacuum tubes? You know, Britton, I really wish that there was some sort of solution to this problem. Maybe our work at Bell Labs could actually do something. We can make something new. You know, what if we made something that had exactly the same properties as a vacuum tube, but didn't have all of its inefficiencies? Brilliant, but what would we call it? Well, I don't know. Maybe we could call it the transfer resistor. Actually, let's call it the transistor. I was talking to Brady and Brent about this. What about a semiconductor that used silicone? Might actually be able to replace vacuum tubes. It'd be very helpful if we could. Hey, semiconductors with silicone. It's what we need. Hmm, that might work. Good. Get to work on it now. Alright, we will. Shockley's such a jerk. Oh, I know. I feel like if we actually made this thing, he'd just take all the credit and we'd just be forgotten. You think? That's definitely what's gonna happen. Oh, man, I wish that we could just do this product on our own and he didn't have to be our supervisor. I wish. Wow, Britton, we actually did it. We invented the world's first transistor. This is gonna be a lot of money. I know. How's it coming along? Well, uh, we finished it. Nice. You're gonna make me, I mean us, a whole lot of money. Shortly after the invention of the transistor, Fairchild Semiconductor became the world's largest transistor manufacturer. It was founded by a group of Silicon Valley geniuses, most notably Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore. Shockley was even listed as a founder. They went on to combine the transistors together to form gates, which helped pave the way for the use of transistors in almost everything. They would be the first to pioneer the development of the next phase of semiconductor industry, the integrated circuit. That's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about it. Noise? Oh, hi, Shockley. More? All right. So I've been a supervisor recently, and these two guys who were working under me came up with like a transfer resistor, transistor. I don't know. What is that a replacement for the vacuum tube? Yes, it is. You use a silicone semiconductor. Brilliant idea. Got it. What I was thinking was that all three of us could work together and create a company to use these transfer resistive things to like manufacture them? Yeah, and put them into hardware. Cool. That sounds great, but what would this company be called? Ah, oh, man. What are we? Well, I mean, we could. There's that, that empty building over on Fairchild Drive. Yeah. Hey, why don't we call that the Fairchild Semiconductor? Yeah, that's a great idea. I like it. Right. Sounds good. Be good. Well, just like we did with vacuum tubes, we could combine these transistors together to form logic gates. But because we don't have the size limitation of this tube, we could put them all on a single wafer and create a circuit. That's a great idea. Yeah, so, well, that would absolutely revolutionize electronics because we could fit hundreds of these little semiconductors on a single chip and call it a, an integrated circuit. Around the same time that Fairchild was developing the integrated circuit, Texas Instruments got a hold of the idea and began working on their own method of developing said device. When both companies released schematics of an integrated circuit within the same day, they entered a long dispute over who would get the credit for the invention. It was eventually settled that both companies would share credit. Welcome to the Patent Office. Please state your name. Hi, my name is Ken. I am the uh, leading designer for Texas Instruments Integrated Circuits. What? No, no. I'm Shockley from Fairchild, and we are the ones who created integrated circuits first. I'm pretty sure I already stated that I am the uh, leader for the integrated circuits. My company is the one who created transistors and worked with them and is manufacturing them. I'm pretty sure we created the greatest circuits first. Okay, guys, I'm going to put them nice. How about you guys just decide to co-found them together? I'm good with that if you are. Yeah, I'd be fine with that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Robert Noyce and Gordon Moore left Fairchild in 1968 to form a company called Intel. Its name stood for Integrated Electronics, and it quickly became the first to develop commercial microprocessors. You know, Moore, Shockley is such a jerk. When we started Fairchild together, he acted like he was going to be a really great guy, but now he's just trying to take all of our credit. And after this issue we've had with the integrated circuit dispute over with Texas Instruments, I just wish we could leave Fairchild. Maybe we should just kick him out of the project altogether. Or we could just start a new company and leave him behind. What would it be called? Well, I don't know. We'd probably focus on the development of integrated circuits. Um, we could maybe call it integrated electronics. Or maybe Intel, for short. Yeah, that's a really great idea. Okay. Hey, so I heard you guys are thinking about starting a new company. I think I want to be a part of it. Um, I'm sorry, but uh, I think we just want to start it on our own. Oh. Okay, then. See how it's going to be. All right, then. This is the invention that started it all. The invention that allowed Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, and many others to earn their fortunes. This is the device that changed the world as we know it. From being a part of the small step for man, to being a part of normal life. Transistors are everywhere around us. Without them, we would not have many things that we take for granted. Music listening devices, cell phones, personal computers are all results of the transistor. We have come from heavy home radios to iPods, which can fit in your hand, from home phones to cell phones, from computers that would take up an entire room to a computer that we can put on our lap. Without them, we wouldn't have such companies as Apple, Microsoft, Dell, and even Texas Instruments, all of which are now major pieces of the American economic infrastructure. And these are just a few examples of what transistors have done to impact our world. In this very room, there are billions, if not trillions, of transistors. Without this tiny invention, the world would be nothing like it is today.